Right, so we continue our path through the architecture development iteration. And we come to an area which is known as business architecture. Now, across most of the architecture spectrum, I personally think the business architecture piece is probably one of the more exciting pieces, which is about exciting as one can get in, in an architecture practice, which is probably a sorry state of affairs. Uh, but in effect, this is where we're taking all of the strategic pieces of the business, and we're now actually starting to look at, well, how can we um, shape the business and start to look at ways to take those strategic scenarios and assemble those building blocks in a way that's, that's you know, ineffectively um, helping the business understand how to achieve their strategic outcomes. And we do that through the, the creation of a business anchor model. We might hear concepts referred to as a target operating model, a business model, an anchor model, a capability model. All of those kind of refer to a similar type of output. That's really what we're looking to develop here coming out of this phase, is to build our first view of the business architecture development model. Right. Now, when we talk about a business model, right, we in effect can look at it in the following way. Right, so this is a, a business model in an organization. Okay. It's broken up into three sections. At the top here, you have what's referred to as a market model. Right. And the market model looks at, well, who are my customers? What are my customer segments? What are my value proposition to those customers, those types of things? Next underneath that, we have what's referred to as a products and services model. And that looks at, well, what are the products and services that I'm going to deliver to that market with those particular value propositions that I'm looking at? And the value proposition is really just a big word for, you know, basically, this is the value to, my, to the customer uh, of what I'm seeing out of that. In other words, it helps me get my job done quicker. Or it you know, makes me look cool because I'm driving a fancy car or something to that extent. So those are the types of value propositions that you know, your customers could get out of that. Um, and down the bottom here, you have a concept called an operating model. And so all of these, an operating model, a products and services model, and a market model, wrap all that together and that gives you your business model. And the business architecture discipline, its focus is to help you deliver that and show you how you string those pieces together. So let's kind of work through a little bit of an example. So let's say I'm an organization. And right at the top I have something referred to as a driver. Right? And I have a regulatory driver which is putting some pressures on my industry. That industry could be utility, maybe an electricity company, a water company, something to that extent, and putting some pricing pressure on that particular industry. Right? So that pricing pressure works down till eventually we get to the point where we analyze it and we realize that we have to reduce our workforce in order to meet those regulatory, pre those regulatory pressures. And there are various tools that you use to come to this conclusion. So this particular one looks at what's referred to as an efficiency branch. Right, as opposed to an effectiveness branch. So in other words, how can we streamline the operations in the business to be more efficient to address this regulatory driver? One of the ways we're going to do that is to reduce our workforce. Now, one of the challenges of reducing a workforce but still delivering the same quality of service is that you're obviously losing skill. So the point of these exercises is to try and see, well, in that case, I, I have an individual. So this is the people component sitting at the bottom here. In the past, I had two people. This one, this fella here, his tickets, he's out of here, and I've only got the one individual left. Which means the knowledge from this particular person has to find its way into that person's head. Not only that, but this person has to now be in more places more often. Right? In other words, his, that skill has to be scheduled better across a broader footprint. Now that's starting to give me an idea of the types of capabilities that I need to be able to work on. So, for example, one here might be knowledge sharing. Okay, so there's a knowledge sharing capability. The other one might be workforce management, right? because I now need to be able to manage my workforce more effectively. Oh, and this one here might be scheduling. Right. So you can kind of get an idea from a regulatory driver all the way down through the structure to a series of capabilities that I need to enforce to be able to address those drivers. Well, these capabilities are the same ones that would predominantly come and slot in here. Right. Now, if I was following an effectiveness approach, right, that's a different story, and that would come up top here and address with products and services and market models pieces. But the example I've used here is very much an efficiency play. Now, if I string together all of the capabilities for all of the objectives that I need to achieve in the organization, so the objective here would be to reduce my workforce by 5% by quarter four 2015. So there's a nice smart objective for you. Smart objective being specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, realistic and time-based. So that's where it's kind of sitting here. And I have capabilities sitting at the bottom that have to achieve that. And if you recall our capability description, people, process, and tools to drive out an outcome. Well, there we have it. There's the outcome that they need to drive out. Here are the capabilities. 
Now I take all of those capabilities that I need with all of my objectives and I produce one of my key artifacts within the business architecture discipline and it's called the business anchor model. Right. And that's a term that, that, that we, is used within the industry. It's not a specific TOGAF term, but it's really it's an anchor business model around or a business capability model, different terms that you might use. But it's an anchor of your organization. Now, a nice way to remember the anchor model is that it's almost like a city. It's like a city grid. You can have an understanding of all of your streets, all of the buildings, all of the suburbs across your organization. And once you have that clear understanding, you can begin to overlay a variety of different artifacts on top of that. Right? And you can insert those artifacts on top. So it could be an electricity grid, it could be a, a water grid, it could be a power grid. All of those could kind of sit above that and give you a, a, a view of, well, how can I view my anchor model or my business through all of these, these lenses and through all of these different overlays? Right, so that's a very high level overview to an extremely complex space, bearing in mind that capabilities have people, process, and tools. But I've just shown you the view of how capabilities tie into this. You roll all those together and you get your business architecture specification document, which is one of the deliverables that TOGAF recommends comes out of their business architecture practice. So a brief overview of all of these aspects, roll those together into a series of models, out of this, you will get your business architecture specification document. And bearing in mind, within that document, remember the five phases. I've gone through the process of looking at current state, looking at future state. So this is beginning to show me future state. And then I'm looking at the gap that exists between my current business model and maybe some of these new objectives and activities that I need to do on these objectives. All of that rolled into your business architecture specification document. And there is one of your primary deliverables for that phase.